Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about NVIDIA Kickstart RT, a brand new SDK that is essentially ray tracing easy mode. Do you want to add ray tracing to your engine of choice without having to go through all of the work? Well, that is exactly what NVIDIA Kickstart is all about. And as an added bonus, we're also going to learn about something called NVIDIA Donut that I didn't know was a thing, but I'm happy it is. So this was announced either at GDC or GTC or at both. It's hard to tell these days. Whoever thought having two developer conferences in the same week was a brilliant idea is... Uh, yeah, not brilliant. So we're looking today, a little bit of an overview. Kickstart RT SDK enables developers to get more realistic dynamic lighting into their game engine in a much shorter time span than traditional methods. It is a cross-API, cross-platform solution that brings real-time ray traced reflections, shadows, ambient occlusion, and global illuminations to game engine. The big thing about it is the kickstart part. It is easy or at least easier so let's start with the demo in action i downloaded the uh, kickstart rt demo uh you have to have sun dependence you need to have uh visual studio running which i had to reinstall to get this to work uh you need to have uh, vulcan sdk um the most recent uh, windows sdk it works with a uh, 2022 version of visual studio by the way uh, but this is also available on linux or at least specifically on ubuntu um so you can see here in action and again it uses a framework called donut which makes me very happy um so this is the sample i'm not going to go through the source code here but this is a, a ray traced uh, i guess we'll call it a gltf viewer i'm just gonna go ahead and see it in action so you can see some of the stuff that this framework is doing now the key thing with this framework is it does doesn't require you uh, to update your scene. You don't have to do any shader work. You basically kind of get ray tracing for free. Now, you're not going to get flawless ray tracing as a result because it's not uh, perfectly integrated, but it is easy. So you don't have to go back and redo all your shaders or your materials, anything like that. Um, so here we go. I can enable translucency. I can turn reflections, transparent reflections on and off. Now, you're not going to see it that well in this particular scene, but the one you will see immediately is I can turn ray trace shadows on. So I've got shadows. And you see the immediate result of the shadows, but I've also got multi-shadowing. And so this is really obvious when I go here. Let's move this guy forward. Let's go into so we can see the lion here. And now let's turn shadow off and then single shadow and then multi-shadow. So this is ray tracing difference here. By the way, you've got control over um, the materials in the scene. So I can take this individual material. So let's say uh, this, this cloth right here. Um, and we can change some things out. So for example, I could, oops, we got the wrong thing selected. Select you. No, sorry, I got to right click to select it. So grab that cloth. We can uh, change base parameters of it right there. But as you can see here, we can actually change things on the whole. So if we want to change the metalness, the way that the, uh, the ray tracing treats it, we can also change the roughness factor. And you can see an immediate ramification, number of things you can change in that regard. But this is a drop in Sponza demo. And this kind of showcases how ray tracing would help. And again, one of the immediately obvious ones is on the shadowing. You can see the difference. So look at that, look at that shadow edge right there. And then I'm gonna turn the ray trace shadows back to multi-shadow. And now you're gonna see it, it blends and smooths the edge. But we also get some crawling artifacts there. So it's not flawless by any means. And we can also turn off global illumination. We'll see the results of that. We can turn off reflections, reflections, and ambient occlusion, and then we turn off the ray trace shadowing, and then now you're going to start really seeing the effects of the Kickstart RT in action. So let's turn all the features back on, and you're seeing what it does to the scene. Now this is, again, not set up specifically for ray tracing, and these are the results you get. You've also got the ability, you can change globally the roughness settings, so I think these are kind of like the defaults to work with. So you're going to see pretty profound difference there if we make everything rough or smooth. You especially see it in the brick down here. So if we have no roughness on that brick, everything's going to get quite shiny. So you can control things at a global level. Ditto for metalness. Uh, we can change the metallicness of things in our scene and change them on the fly. We've also got some uh, control over how caching is done. Uh, what else we got? Light, light, light injection, shadows, first hit and end search. Uh, world position from depth. That's part of how this math is actually already being done. We can also change the uh, global ambient occlusion in our scene. Uh, you can have a procedural sky or not. You do have control over how the procedural sky is generated. Uh, we can also turn off subsurface ambient occlusions, shadows, and bloom if we so wish. And you're seeing the immediate result of those right here. Now, I'm going to want to turn all those back on and showcase in this demo. This is essentially a GLTF viewer. So we can actually come in here and switch out to a number of different scenes. So, for example, we have the, the helmet is here somewhere. Um, 
flight helmet. All right, so grab that guy right there. Now you will notice a couple of these do cause crashes. If you do check out the demo, by the way, it uses the traditional uh, left click to, to zoom and bend. So left click to move around in the scene. Uh, the right click is, um, actually I don't think it, oh, that's the select the, uh, the shader underneath what you're looking at or the material surface underneath what you're looking at. So if you wanna go ahead and change something, for example, these lens specifically, and we wanna change the roughness of the lens, we can do so accordingly, or you can, you know, make some slightly more profound changes on the fly. And again, you got all of the various different things here. I got basically everything turned on at this point, so we can turn them off. These are all the things that you are getting graphically. So reflections, reflections transparent, global illumination, ambient occlusion, and of course the shadowing. So no shadowing, shadow, and multi-shadow. So this gives you an idea of the uh, kind of ray tracing like functionality that you could add to your engine. Now let's look at how this actually makes life different. So go back here, scroll down a little bit more. By the way, I will have this linked in the linked article down below. The benefits of the Kickstart RT is it integrates faster. So it forgoes the traditional Direct 3D 12 API requirements and the invasive changes you need to make to your material system. So we're looking at existing material, existing examples from the GLTF collection. No changes were done to support everything we just saw here. The SDK enables real-time ray trace reflections, shadows, ambient occlusion, and global illumination. Uh, it also runs everywhere. This one's actually pretty nice. So cross API, cross platform solution provides APIs via Direct 11, 12, Vulkan. So, and it can also run on Windows and Linux. So if you're looking for cross-platform ray tracing, you're not tying yourself just to DirectX 12 in this case. Uh, and that is very, very nice in that case. So you can get uh, DirectX, Direct 3D 11 support there as well. In terms of the available effects, we saw all these in action in the demo. Ray trace global illumination and ambient occlusion, ray trace reflections, ray trace shadows, and that is that. Now, this is an open source project. It is available on GitHub. I will have this linked down below as well. Um, so we've got uh, license. Let's view the license. Uh, it is under the MIT open source license, which is very nice. It's a very flexible license in terms of what it allows you to do. It was just published four days ago. You come in down here and you get a whole lot more details of how how things actually work, how they pull this trick off. So when implementing ray tracing into an existing game engine, one of the biggest problems is preparing the shaders for reflections and global illumination rays. All of this countless shaders that exist in the game scene must be listed and configured. We also need to make sure that various shader resources can be accessed correctly from those shaders for each material. This can be a very complex task. Instead of, up, instead of setting up all those shaders, this SDK takes the lighting information from a render G buffer and stores it in a world space cache. The inf uh, therefore, the application does not need to modify any shaders for ray tracing. Internally, the SDK SDK creates for reflection and GI information by sampling the lighting information using ray tracing. This is the biggest difference from screen space techniques as lighting information for off-screen objects will also be sampled if it is stored by the SDK. So that is kind of a, an idea of how it works. Um, it isn't flawless by any means. There are definitely some flaws here that you can read about right here. Get a bit of an overview of how it actually works. Basically, your application is passing in uh, some buffers to the SDK, and the SDK is doing its magic. So the G buffer, um, the application passes the G buffer containing the lighting along with depth and normal information to the SDK. SDK stores the information of the G buffer in lighting cache in world space. Also receives a projection matrix and view matrix information along with the G buffer, which are needed to reconstruct world space. So the SDK does the ray tracing internally passage reflection and GI results to the application um, and then basically back to your app. So that's what it is. It's basically a cheating version implemented for ray trace. So if you've got a game engine out there already and you want to kind of involve in or put ray tracing on top of it, especially if it's a Direct 3D 11 or Vulkan um, game engine, uh, this will kind of make it easier to do so. So here are the requirements to get things up and running. Uh, personally, I did it with Visual Studio 2022. Do install the Vulkan SDK. Make sure that your um, Windows 10 SDK is reasonably recent. Uh, this one I didn't install and everything works just fine. In terms of GPU requirements, you can see what are there. Uh, they're pretty modest on the whole. Uh, do be sure when you check out this repository that you check it out recursively so you get all of the various dependencies you need. And now while we're here, one brief mention about Donut. So if you go to NVIDIA Gameworks and we go take a look at their repositories, 
By the way, they have a lot of repositories, but I didn't know that this one existed. It's actually kind of a neat little project, and that is Donut. So Donut is available right here. You'll notice if we go back to the source code, by the way, if you want to dig into this source code, uh, where the main source itself is under the uh, Kickstart RT underscore demo, uh, there, right there, Kickstart underscore sample underscore main dot CPP, that's probably where you want to dig in to figure out how they actually, you know, set those buffers up, send it back to the SDK. The SDK is all in here, and then we've got Donut, which is this uh, uh, rendering uh, framework, uh, kind of scaffolding for creating your own applications that uh, they made. So this is used for making all of their demos. So Donut is a real-time rendering framework built by NVIDIA for use in various prototype renderers and code samples. It provides a collection of reusable and somewhat extensible rendering passes that can be put together in an application and a system for loading a scene and maintaining its component graph. So basically it's a lightweight framework for you know getting started with cross-platform graphics rendering. And if you've ever done you know the setup work, the setup work to get a triangle up on OpenGL is like 200 lines of code. To do it with DirectX 12 is probably about 800, maybe 900 lines of code. To do it with Vulkan, we're talking about 1,300 lines of code. And this does all of that stuff and substantially more. Uh, they used it to make their Asteroids demo, the DLSS SDK, and the RTXDI SDK. So it's an interesting little thing. If you want to get started with your own graphics applications and you don't want to do it all from scratch, Donut could be a good thing to check out. It's built into the core, the engine, the renderer, and the app all kind of split apart. And if you're interested, interested in checking it out again this app this demo app here that we're seeing um for the kickstart rt if we go back to the very very top uh, all the way to the top you will see that it is ultimately all right it's not a render targets where's our app come on app it's somewhere right around here but basically it is a donut app i think it might be right here here. Anyways, this is a donut app that it's based on. So uh, it's sort of a light. Oh, there we go. So it's based off of um, the donut framework. Uh, and it kind of gives you all of the, the basics you need to create these kind of demo apps yourself. Uh, so it's definitely one of those things worth checking out. So that is kind of the bonus content in this one. I did not know that NVIDIA Donut existed. I love the name of it for some strange reason. Um, and it is also under the MIT license. So if you're looking at doing some kind of graphics programming, but you don't want to go through the pain that is, uh, you know, rolling your own in Vulkan or DirectX 12 or whatever, uh, Donut may be a good starting point. And that was what is actually used in the Kickstart RT um, SDK. So if you're interested in checking this out, uh, it is available uh, at the RTX section, Ray Tracing Kickstart. I will have that link. I'll have the GitHub link and I'll have the Donut links down below as well. It's a neat technology. Again, there are some shortcomings. You're going to want to read about those shortcomings. Um, they're available here in the Kickstart RT. They kind of walk through the the things that it doesn't do as well. So uh, go through this. You're going to find out some of the areas where this isn't going to work flawlessly. Also, if you have massive changes in the lighting environment, it could cause problems. You're going to have to recreate those buffers and so on. Uh, but it's a compromise. And if you wanted to add ray tracing, ray trace shadows, global illumination, all of those things to your engine, but you don't want to have to re rewrite all the materials, make your content different, create new shaders and so on. Kickstart RT could be a very good compromise solution for that. So anyways, interesting enough uh, new project. And uh, if you didn't already know about Donut, now you do. Let me know what you think. Comments down below and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.